Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Whizbang Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Goodall. How many episodes is this? I don't even know. No one's going to answer me if I ask that, but we're still trucking along. Today with me, I have John R. Miller, singer-songwriter. You call yourself a guitar picker? Uh, not usually, but... What defines a guitar picker? Let me get through your bio first. Let me get through that. Singer-songwriter, touring musician, recording artist with Rounder Records, correct? Correct. John R. Miller, welcome to the Nashville Studio Hang. How are you? Uh, I'm great. Uh, it's uh, great, great to see you. Great to be here. Uh, this is a nice this environment, very, this right? Very nice studio that y'all have. This is very clean. Yeah, we got some nice records over here. You have a new record, 2021. Yeah, on Rounder. Yeah. How did that come about? When did those songs get put together? How were they recorded? I know those are big, broad questions, but well, I'll try to give you big, broad answers. Um, <laughs> I, uh, a few of the songs are, are kind of, kind of older, but most of them were, um, written in, in a couple of years leading up to the recording. Uh, we did it at Sound Emporium studio here in town. Um, and, uh, Justin Francis engineered and, uh, co-produced it with Adam Meiserhans and they're both old, old buddies and Adam played guitar all over it and right on. Yeah. We, uh, we love Justin. Justin helped me with my record. He mixed and mastered my record. I love Justin. Can you tell me about how, I don't know, I'm, I like to ask writers this because this feels like it's different. It's different for everybody. How often do you sit down and write? Like how long does a song take to, from start to finish? Um, I try to, in my heart of hearts, I try to write a little bit every day, um, but uh, the, the, try to make a habit of it, but it does sort of, you know, stuff gets in the way of that. Um, but uh, sometimes, you know, a song will will come out pretty close to done. But a lot of the time, I'll like, you know, write a few verses and a chorusy thing, and then I'll try playing it out. Decide that doesn't work, and go back and retool it. You know, so it's kind of a, a work in progress until. Right until it's recorded and then using, even afterwards sometimes you using legal pads you using iphone voice memos you know how how much tech is involved in this process that's uh, also a thing where everybody's different when it comes to that yeah uh notebook and and pen a lot of the time uh or typewriter I use a lot um just something that isn't connected to the internet usually is the best method for me <laughs> right i was i have a little i have my cheat sheet here which i don't always have but somebody told me to uh, bring up the typewriter thing is that a thing you're like deeply passionate about uh i you know i i uh i have a few of them um it kind of i kind of found found my way into a, a little bit of a mild obsession with them when we were kind of stuck at home for a long long time and mm -hmm. uh I uh, was sort of looking for for a way to get away from the computer and writing and stuff and and uh, yeah, I, they're you know mechanical marvels and they don't really they don't really make them anymore. Um, but there's still uh, there's I come to find out there's a whole whole community of people that are pretty passionate about them. And yeah, isn't there like a big documentary that has like all these celebrities? There's a documentary that I've seen snippets of and it has like Tom Hanks talking about his typewriter and John Mayer talking about his typewriter and they're like deep. Into yeah, it, you know yeah. What I'm saying? It's a it's definitely a thing. And this is uh, just in the past couple of years, I've kind of realized that 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 was even even happening. Uh, there's actually a guy that um opened up a shop not far from where we we live he just actually opened up his brick and mortar location uh like a month ago uh, nashville typewriter and he's he's a great uh uh repair guy and um kind of finds finds old typewriters and fix them up and refurbishes them so where you find I, I had to stick on this typewriter thing because i find it kind of fascinating where do you find a typewriter facebook marketplace ebay sometimes and state sales yeah it, sometimes and you know like traveling uh uh i'll i'll usually if we have a little downtime in a place i'll check marketplace and see if there's like any gear or anything or uh or a typewriter um i've gotten some some pretty cool stuff just traveling around but uh you know, it's sometimes you know you get something home and uh it is 
a lot worse under the hood than than it than it looks but and sometimes the reverse is true you know um are you fixing them yourself uh I, I kind of clean them up and I, I have a limited capacity of kind of getting them working properly. So right. I'm, I'm not a, not a proper tech by any means, but I do try to try to get them as far as I can get them. And then if, uh, if it's worth it, I take them into a shop or something. I'm recalling from the, the snippets of that documentary where I think it was, I mean, I, I, there's footage of like Bob Dylan using one. I know he used a typewriter all the time, but that would have been of the era, but like, John Mayer talking about he would write like free association, like two pages a night or whatever. And then the next day, look at everything he wrote. And this was or it was typed. Do you ever do any exercises like that writing wise? So like a free association, just fill the page. I feel like that would be really satisfying to do on a typewriter day after day. It, it well, yeah, um, it is. You can kind of get into a flow state uh, with something like that. And a little for, for me, I'm easily distracted by the internet and stuff. And so if I try to do that on a computer, it, it often, um, falls apart. But, uh, with a typewriter, it's really, it's, it's really fun. You can kind of, uh, go a little, little deeper and you can just sort of, I don't know, it's just sort of a flow state thing, I guess. But it, um, I do, uh, I, every, I do every day, uh, try to do, uh, morning pages. Um, which is like a three pages long hand every morning, just like brain, just brain dump. I'm jealous of that. I never make time to do that kind of thing. And then I wonder why I'm like frustrated. You know what I'm saying? It's like, well, you haven't like sat down and taken the time to sort all that stuff out. You know what I'm saying? It really, it took me a while to get to a point where I was doing it every day. Mm -hmm. Um, and sometimes a lot of the time it, 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 it can really feel like a chore, but it does kind of, I don't know, freeze up the bandwidth a little bit for working on actual stuff, you know, I, I think. You know. Right. Last thing about the typewriter, I promise. Favorite brand, typewriter? If you could endorse one, if you could make a commercial for your favorite typewriter company, what would that be? Uh, I really like Olivetti's. Um, I have a, I have a, a Lettera 22, uh, which is a super portable little thing um, from the 50s that I really like a lot. And, uh, they, they merged with, with Underwood. I also have a really, really cool Underwood. Underwood I've heard of. That's the only company I can think of. Yeah. Um, but Olivetti's really cool. Uh, and, uh, uh, I've heard a lot of people talk about how much they like, um, the, uh, Olympia manuals, but I've never gotten to, to own one of those myself. They kind of fetch a little higher dollar than I usually want to spend. I'm dealing with a typewriter expert here. Dude, are you taking a, really to keep merging all this stuff on the bullet points I have, which I hate to really reference in conversation in a human being conversation, looking down at notes, feels a little tacky, but please forgive me. I didn't type these, these are handwritten by the way, I'm sorry. <laughs> you taking the typewriter on tour to Europe? No. No way. No, I can't, I, when I, especially when you're flying, you know, you gotta, you gotta take as little, as it was much as you can fit into a suitcase so the bulkier stuff usually has to stay behind um that's fine i don't mind to to write longhand uh either when when is the europe tour uh it is now march of 2023 so we had to push it back a year uh because of border covid restriction mm -hmm. logistical stuff mm -hmm. and so we we rescheduled it it just got announced for next year so. i got gotcha. you also on the books a tour with vincent neil emerson that's that's this year that's 2020 that's this yeah. week yeah that's we're, this week okay <laughs> yeah we're leaving in just a few days with with uh, them i'm really excited about that the band will be here in a couple of days you already friends with him or how'd you link up with him how'd that work out uh i think uh, it's sort of uh uh connection that was made with um like mutual uh booking and people. how it happens yeah you know how it works but uh i love his music and i'm i'm really excited to uh to get to hear him live i've never actually gotten to meet him and uh you know we've talked a little bit uh just sending messages back and forth and stuff but well i think you gotta you gotta write him letters 
I'm not going to let this typewriter thing go. I promise. I'm really sorry. That's when everyone in the room is supposed to laugh. I was bringing that up before we recorded. I didn't get them, but that's all right. Well, dude, John, super good to talk to you. Um, anything else we need to bring up before? Because uh, we use this as, you know, this is our this is our true blue internet promotional device. Yeah. Uh, gosh, I should have made my own notes. Uh, <laughs> you could be typing them for us right now. That sound. We could have put the microphone right on the typewriter. Imagine that click with it's this beautiful so, it's, mic. It's so good. Yeah, it's very satisfying. Um, at the you know at the risk of sounding pretentious, but it is very satisfying. Uh, I would just I would I would say if uh, if I had anything to say right now, it's if you see a bulk case of Stroop waffles at the Costco, you don't need that in your life. Don't buy it. It's not it's not necessary. Unless, unless you, uh, you know, sage, but specific advice. Thank you for stopping by John R. Miller. Thanks for having Ooh, me. We clap now. We clap. <laughs>